Most people moving and working in the vertical world need it, a rope. But interestingly, it is pretty useless without one thing, some kind of end termination. In this series, we take a closer look at these terminations and in this episode specifically at splices and the consequences of certain mistakes while performing a splice. Hi, my name is Phil from the Edelried Knowledge Base. Okay, this episode will be a little geeky. I want to look at the process of splicing and what can go wrong. I mentioned it in the previous episodes that there is an obvious understandable doubt looking at a splice whether or not it can be trusted as you cannot see the inside of it. So what can go wrong when doing certain ice splices? And what could be certain types of mistakes committed when performing an ice splice? Let's start with the assumption that you could get some measurements wrong. Depending on which measurement this concerns, there is a fairly quick and satisfactory answer. Actually, for the majority of splicing measurements, this means that the splice cannot be finished or very clearly does not look correct. So you clearly see if you effed up something in the process. Another interesting part though, that also has something to do with measurements, concerns interlocked splices. And in particular this, I'm gonna call it crossover part where the sheath feeds in the core and the core feeds in the sheath. What if you get something wrong here? To judge this, we made and pulled different long interlocked sheath core crossover sections. So let's break and see. Very interestingly, you immediately see that longer crossover section does not increase strength. In the case of this sheath and core, we reach a maximum strength of around 10 kN that from 20 cm crossover length does not go up anymore with longer crossover sections. We also see that the lower end in this case is around 15 cm. At this point, the friction of the interlocking is simply too low and both pieces just get pulled apart. Of course, note that these values again are specific to these tested braids and can of course be different for a different braid. The result here is you will not increase the strength of a splice with longer crossover sections. And this point gets even more interesting when we perform the test again with 15 cm crossover length, but this time secure it by a few handmade stitches, because then we also get close to the 10 kN. Again, emphasizing the point made in the previous episode that securing of the splice is important to keep all elements in place, but it doesn't increase strength. Also, an interesting value here is to test how strong a knotted connection between the same sheath and core would be. We see that this is far lower than the interlocking method and a reason why splices are so strength efficient. We then further tested two other aspects in regards of this crossover section. What happens if you don't taper the ends and what happens if you pull the crossover point really, really tight? Both things you could also do wrong when splicing. We see that for both scenarios, this means also lower resulting strength of the crossover section. These would not be catastrophic failures, but we learn that they lower the resulting strength of a splice. Summing it all up again. For interlock type splices, the length of the crossover section should not be too short, but you don't increase strength and therefore safety by making it longer and longer. And not tapering your ends properly or pulling the crossover point too tight can result in a decrease of overall strength for a splice. And that is also my personal experience, having done and tested hundreds of splices. The more smoothly and balanced your splice is made, the stronger it is. 